In the name of the one God, who is Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. So that that gospel reading that we just heard is one of those that makes better sense, probably, if you know what's come just before it, which is often true about Scripture. I mean, it's a story, so it kind of does go sequentially oftentimes. But anyway, in this case, what's come just before is that Jesus has told his friends for the third time what's going to be waiting for him in Jerusalem at the hands of the religious leaders. He, He has told them that they will condemn me to death and mock me and spit upon me and flog me and kill me. I mean, there's no subtlety to this message, right? But Jesus says after all that, after three days, he will rise again. And then we pick up today, and apparently James and John have heard um, only the last part of that, (laughs) the the rising again part, because in the next breath, they're asking Jesus for positions of supreme honor when he comes into his kingdom. And Jesus can't believe it. I mean, he's like, really? From what I just said, that's what you heard? I mean, power and glory are not where this road is leading, Jesus says. Not not even he is angling for accolades here. In fact, he's been doing everything he can to show his friends that the heart of God gives itself away. I mean, you know, the way things work in our world, the great ones, Jesus says, the great ones act like tyrants, conflating power with self-interest. But the reign and rule of God goes the other way. That whoever wishes to be great among you must be your servant, Jesus says. And whoever wishes to be first among you must be slave of all. For as we heard from St. Francis a few weeks ago, the way of Christ is not to be served, but to serve. Now, if we, if we look into our own hearts, I mean... Maybe some of us find ourselves there with James and John following Jesus for the glory that it promises, maybe heavenly glory, or maybe the glory of recognition and praise for our good works in the here and now, you know. And I guess if that's what your self-examination reveals, then you, you may need a little foot washing therapy, uh, the chance to go off and serve somebody when no one else is watching and then offer that as a token of a changed heart. But my guess is that most of us err on the other side. Many of us do a fair amount of serving in in both the public and private facets of our lives. Maybe you take care of kids or, or a spouse or a family member. Maybe you pray for people who need healing or maybe you serve in worship or Maybe, you know, you call people on their birthdays. Or maybe you serve in the community in a free clinic or a a food pantry or a boardroom. I mean, you're probably not seeking glory or even accolades for it. In fact, for most people, attention is the last thing they want for their service. You're just trying to do what Jesus asks, right? So for servants like that, I think the past 20 months have been especially tough. I mean, COVID hasn't been easy for anybody, but for those wired to give of themselves, the pandemic has meant sacrifice on top of that service. I mean, you know, we were asked to keep our distance from each other, and we're still wearing masks to protect each other. And for some of us, our work takes us out on the front lines and puts us at risk. And in a community like this, like in a church, because of COVID, there are fewer people around in person. And so, you know, the people who are already busy end up getting asked to do one more thing. And pretty quickly, that can become one more thing too many. And then on top of all that, there's the stress of living in a time when uh, civility and Respect seem like quaint memories from a bygone age. Now, disrespect knows no political or cultural boundaries, but 
I was struck by a story that a parishioner shared with me this past week that, that he'd been out running, or he'd been out walking, rather, and a runner came toward him wearing a T-shirt. And that T-shirt proclaimed, if you're a Republican, you're an idiot. I mean, you've got to be kidding. Even the most open-hearted among us might find it challenging to love neighbors like that. And still, Jesus comes to us in today's reading and tells us that in his kingdom, we find greatness in humility and blessing in service. And I can feel myself and others thinking, really, Lord? You, you, you want me to love one more jerk? You, you want me to take on one more thing? Well, okay, so today we're beginning our annual stewardship season. And, and frankly, in a time of divisiveness and pandemic, um, I kind of think the call to stewardship might be a bit of a tough sell. <laughs> Because for many of us, when we hear that word, stewardship, and, and certainly when we hear the words pledge campaign, we hear the word give. And maybe we're worn a little bit too slick to hear that well. But I want to give you three reasons why, not, why you shouldn't tune out quite yet. <laughs> and the first reason is captured in the, <clears throat> in the theme of this year's stewardship season which is pass the peace. So what we're doing with that is highlighting ways that members of this church family step outside themselves to serve others and share God's love. And that, that happens in so many ways. I mean, church ministries, but also in just day-to-day -day life. We, we pass the peace when we pray for each other. We pass the peace when we make a, joy, a joyful noise to the Lord, you know. We, we pass the peace when we serve somebody a snack after church. We pass the peace when we shop with a family at Banneker Elementary or serve hungry people downtown. We pass the peace when we pray for healing in our city or sponsor a refugee family. And we certainly pass the peace when we listen and learn from someone with whom we disagree. So my point in this is I hope you will share how you do it, how you pass the peace. The, the, this season we're going to be asking you to share photos or videos representing how you pass God's peace to other people. And you can, you can post them on social media or send it to me by email or or send us a text. There's instruction in the bulletin and messenger for how to do that. And then we'll share examples with you as people's examples come in. Plus, as part of the, the pledge campaign this year, we'll be inviting you to make a pledge not just of, of financial giving, but of even just one way that you will pass God's peace in the coming year. So why would we do this? I mean, it doesn't seem directly tied to pledge campaigns, right? But, you know, passing the peace is how we help God's kingdom to come on earth as it is in heaven. It's how we help heal this world. And, and it's how we live no longer for ourselves alone, but for him who died and rose for us. Okay, so passing the peace, I think, is a compelling thing. Here's, here's the second reason not to tune out <laughs> on this call to pass the peace, and, and it's this. It really is not about doing more. It's about presenting what you do, even the single act, as a thank offering to God, an act of prayer. Like I said, for most of us, you know, serving is not a foreign concept, but we may not have as much experience with sanctifying our service in prayer. And you know, when you hear the church asking you to serve, <clears throat> it, it can be, it can seem sometimes that the message is, you know, the more you do, the more stars you get in your heavenly crown or something. I had a, a seminary professor who 
like to warn about the church becoming the helping Olympics, where we, uh, where we give gold medals to the superstars of altruism, you know. But we don't earn our way into eternal life, of course. It's God's gift to us when we give our hearts to God. So instead of asking you to do one more thing, I guess I'm asking you to consecrate what you do. Raise up even just one act for others as a gift that you will offer to the one who's given you everything you have. Don't, don't worry about doing more. Make what you do more sacred. And, and here's the third reason to take seriously this call to pass the peace. It's actually a little bit self-interested. Because the person that you will bless most through your sacred service is yourself, oddly enough. I mean, the way God has designed us, our, our spiritual DNA comes with this counterintuitive, counterintuitive bit of wiring that, that brings us our greatest joy when we give ourselves away. You know, when you follow Jesus' call and pass that peace to others, the love you give returns tenfold. But you don't have to just take it from me, you know. You pay me to say things like this. But over the next six Sundays, you'll get to hear from members of our parish family as they tell their own stories of how they've been blessed by serving others. And first up now is parishioner Bruce Long. So in addition to enjoying his reflection, I hope you will keep coming back for more. <laughs>